Hi, this is Greg Hughes. You know, 90 Second Website Builder gives you a unique set of uh, drawing tools that you won't find in really any other web design package. And so in this video tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about how to use those tools. Maybe a quick overview. I have a website here open up in 90 Second Website Builder, and this is a project that I'm working on for a site called Blackwire Hosting. But I'm going to scroll down to the bottom where we have some white space so I can show you kind of a quick tour of these tools under the category drawing. Now they all do unique things and we'll just go through these very quickly. The last one we'll show you is the shape tool because that's probably the most common or universal one you'll use. But let me quickly go through these others. Here we have what we call a banner tool which is just basically a quick way to make sort of a header or a banner. And you'll see it picks up some uh, text when you make this banner. When you double click on it you can set the style and uh, the text and everything you can imagine about this. So it, it picked up the text from the uh, page title that we happen to be on right now. So this this page is called Blackwire Hosting and so I picked that up but I can uncheck this box and edit this any way that I want to or have no text at all if you want. And of course you can pick the font and the color of that font and the size of that font and all the things you can imagine as well as style the banner with everything from gradient colors to images in the background to solid colors borders that can be any width and any style you could imagine. Also, you can add special effects like shadows. You can even preview it here. You can even turn this into a link because essentially this just becomes an image on your website. And that's just the banner tool. Of course, you can stretch it and make it whatever size you want. Some of the other drawing tools we'll look at here is one called Clip Art, which is kind of handy. You just basically draw a box and it brings up a library of clip art. Now, your clip art library may look a little bit different than mine. I have some other things in here that I've added to my clip art library which you can do in your system folder but it comes with a lot of pre-built clip art. Lots of selections as you can imagine as we scroll through here there's just a lot of things you could you can use. So if you wanted to use a piece of clip art you simply select it click OK and then you can style this so you can double click on it and do so many things with it it really becomes your own. Here's a preview of it. I could make it again a gradient color. I could make the border be uh, whiter and maybe darker. And you can see what you're doing here. There are so many things you can do. I don't have time to obviously to go through every possible scenario, but you can change the color of everything and make this uh, be just the way you want it. Again, this can be a link. You can add shadow and offsets for the inner shadow, etc. So that's the uh, clip art tool. Again, lots of choices there. Then there's some of these sort of um, freehand or freestyle drawing tools. We'll start with the curve tool. Basically, if you're artistic and you can move your mouse or your input device in a, in a nice uh, straight way, you can draw shapes. That's basically what that is. Draw whatever, you, whatever shape you want. And then, of course, you can stylize it with the uh, properties by double clicking. That's the curve. There's also a closed curve where you go like this and it fills it in double click on it and then you've got this other thing. As you can see I'm a terrible artist with my mouse so I probably wouldn't use that very often. Here's something very interesting though. If you draw, this is called curved text and if you just sort of draw, again I'm, I'm not very artistic this way, I'll just draw sort of a curve. What this does, and by the way I'm double clicking when I end it, it puts some text there. Let me get rid of these things so we can look th at this a little better. It puts text inside this curve along the line that I drew. It's a very unique tool and it will conform to that however you drew it and however you stretch it around. Kind of a fun tool really. And of course you would change that text by double clicking and going to the uh, the text property which is right here. Let's put something in there and uh, click OK. So whatever text you put in there will conform to whatever curve you drew. Kind of a funny way to uh, display something but if you're if you're better than I am at drawing, that will be good for you. Here's a line tool, which just basically, you know, makes straight lines. And by stretching and releasing that, I'm going to double click and bring up the line properties. I can change the width of this, the color of it. Again, whether it's dotted and dashed and all the things you can imagine. I can even put um, arrows at the end or circles or squares or diamonds. I put a little arrow here. Decide on the size of that arrow. I can make it larger. On one end, I'll put a square. Uh, make that a little bit larger and click OK. And you can see we've done this little uh, line tool. It's great kind of a architectural tool in a way. So you can make straight lines and just twist them around where you want them. Any color and any length you want. That's the line tool. The polygon tool is very similar to the curve closed. 
you double click on it here you can open it up and change the settings for it again the fill effects and the border and then we've got the scribble tool also similar to the curves if you're good at drawing you can draw some lines and some shapes and some funny things I double click to get out of that and there I have basically drawn a line that I want I'm gonna skip the shape tool We'll come to that last the text art tool is pretty handy actually if you just click on that and drag a box out here and start you off with some text double click on that to change the text to whatever you want it to be now there's a lot of things going on here this is actually a great way to maybe make a title or a headline maybe something you would put at the top of your website or even um, the heading of a paragraph it's just a fancy way to use any kind of text you want now you can use any font you want it doesn't have to be a web safe font because this will ultimately become an image and so this is a good way to use sort of your fancier fonts that wouldn't be good in a text object so if you wanted to use a font that let's say like impact and let's uh, rather than have it bend around let's make it be kind of straight click OK see I've changed the font to impact and I've made it sort of straight but I can stretch this and you know just kind of make it fit what I want it to fit I can double click on it of course and change the color of it if I want it to be a solid black then I can do that but as you can imagine and again you can't go through every possible scenario you can make some really nice headlines with this tool again there's a border tool if I wanted to add sort of a sort of a uh, stroke to it let's make that a little bit wider then we've added a little uh, border also there's a gallery of pre-made styles in here and they can kind of get you started if there's something you kind of like and then want to tweak you can so if you say oh I kind of want this sort of effect here you can take this and change it adjust it maybe you say I like this but I want it to be sort of transparent and maybe I want it to have a border a little bit you can do all of that and click OK and you can see you could just make all kinds of headings what I really want to spend more time on is the shape tool and the reason why is because this is going to be the most common drawing tool all of these drawing tools are kind of fun and frankly you should play with them just to see what they do but the most practical one in my opinion aside from the text art is this shape tool and here's why because it just makes some very simple shapes it's very common for you to use shapes on your website so for example you could have um, a box with some text in it or sometimes you might have what they call the three bucket system you'll see a lot of websites that have these sort of um, similar content areas well you could use the shape tool to do that and you know this might be a paragraph and an, and an image or another image in a paragraph and so you can use the shape tool to make these sort of content areas however let me show you a couple of things about this the number of shapes you can make is almost unlimited I'm gonna double click on one of these so you can see where I got this there's a pull down here with all kinds of shapes as we create new versions of 90 second website builder we are always adding other shapes so if you're using an older version than what I'm using in this video you'll see we've added a number of other shapes here as I get to the bottom there's a, just a ton of options here and this is just the shape we haven't even stylized it yet we have all kinds of shapes there's even these talk bubbles and of course you can change the settings for this to be solid any color you want um, transparent and opaque borders the width of that the color of that all of the stuff you would imagine and of course everything that you create can have text put into it if you want to so you can actually put you know something in this and um, affect the font and the style of this font so there's a lot of details here also everything you make can be a link because you're just basically creating an image that image can have effects like shadows and inner shadows with offsets so I'm gonna click OK and you can see I just made a talk bubble with my name in there one thing you should know about the shape tool and this is really the an important part of this tutorial when you create a shape on your website you're actually telling the software to add an image and as you may or may not know the more images you have on your website the heavier your website becomes in other words if you had a web page with a lot of lot of images it loads slower than a page with just text so it's a good idea to reduce the number of images and their size as much as possible now of course the page that I have here you can see has a lot of images on it and it's okay that's not too many you want to be careful to keep your page load light so that your page loads as quickly as possible so if, let's say I wanted to have a whole bunch of uh, little bullet points the shape tool allows me to do that by creating circles and let's say I made them smaller you know make them tiny so I want maybe sort of these bullet points like this and then I could copy paste and make all these little bullet points well that would be great because they look nice and by the way I can align them they don't have to be this crooked we do that real quick while I'm here arrange align 
Well, that's fine, except that what I just did was I just added four more images to my website. The shape tool does something very, very unique. This is a little bit technical, but it will really help you. Instead of saving these as images, I can actually tell the software to save these as a code called CSS. CSS is a design code, stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And when this object is saved as CSS instead of as an image, it loads many, many times faster. It's a much better way to go. Here's how we do that. I'm going to double click on it. And in this particular shape, under Publish, instead of publishing this as an image, I can tell the software to publish this as CSS3. Now this is a very, very powerful feature in 90 Second Website Builder. It's kind of one of those best kept secrets, honestly, because by doing this, you can use a lot more shapes on your page without having to worry about page load or page speed. Very, very powerful. So I click OK. Instead of having all these different shapes, I could make all of these be CSS3 objects and they would load very, very quickly. Now here's the catch. When you want a shape to be saved as a CSS3, you're limited to what those shapes can be. There's only a very few that can be created with code. And in fact, they are the top three. You can do that with any kind of square or rectangle shape or any kind of square rectangle shape that has rounded or radius uh, corners. That can be used as CSS or any kind of circle as you saw with my bullet points. So when I take this shape like this, even, the, even if I stretch it this way, that can be saved as CSS. However, this cannot because this is a complex shape. It doesn't have straight edges and it's not a circle. So this cannot be saved or published as CSS. And if I try to do it, if I say publish this as CSS, it will not look right. It'll come out as probably a red square. Let me show you. I'm going to hit F5. And you can see what happens when you tell it to save it as CSS. And sure enough, it didn't do it. Let me move the camera down here so you can see what happened. So these worked. This one was CSS. This is CSS. But see, CSS cannot convert that fancy shape. This object would have to be saved as an image, which is fine to do. Again, I'm just telling you, don't go overboard on the images. And if your website's already loaded down with images, you want to be careful how many of those you use. Sometimes people have a tendency to overuse the shape tool because it's so fun and easy to use and stack things up. So you just want to be mindful of that. Okay, let me close this preview and move my camera back up. And I'm going to get rid of these and show you a, a quick thing that I did. I'm going to delete this, delete this, and let's delete all of these. I selected them and hitting delete. Let's go back up to the page I'm working on here. As you can see, this page does have a lot of images. This is a big uh, image right here. This right here is a layer with uh, an image that's kind of hanging off the edge here with text. I've also got an image here. This is one big image here. This is all text over here. And up here, I have a video inside a layer. This is an image and this is text, but this right here, the reason I used a shape here is because I just couldn't quickly find an image that had that kind of arrow that I wanted. I suppose if I really go look for an image that's an arrow, I could have found one, but because I'm using 90 Second Website Builder, it's really easy to create this kind of a shape. So I did that and I liked the way this is sort of pointing to my button here. So this is a shape that is I selected from the pull down. It's kind of a triangle. I picked a multicolor gradient, set it as a red glossy, and all my settings here. And then I kind of stretched it narrow so that it points like this. That's how it comes out. Now, this cannot be saved as CSS3. If I did, it would come out as a rectangle. This has to be saved as an image. However, it's the only shape that I'm using on this page, and so far the page loads just fine. So that's just some quick tips for you to know when you're using the drawing tool. Again, the shape tool is the one you're probably going to use the most often. Just be aware of all of the multiple things you can do with it, but you should also be aware of limitations so that you don't load your page down with things that are too heavy. But just have fun. Use the drawing tools, play with them, see what they do, and see some of the creative things you can come up with when you're designing your website with 90 Second Website Builder.